Our story begins with our protagonist clenching his teeth and slamming his hand in anger. Our protagonist's name is Amek Leo, and he was a jobless player. Today, his whole party was wiped out, and the reason was that the system continuously warned him of something unknown. He immediately looked back in fear and was surprised to see a huge monster with many hands glaring at him. The system warned him that an unknown object had been detected in the game, and its species, abilities, level, and identity were unknown. This encounter would change Leo's destiny. Paradise Heaven was a game released 10 years ago and has now merged with the real world, turning into an MMORPG dungeon. Dungeons and monsters have appeared all over the world, and the survivors of these dungeons are now known as players. Two hours ago, in an uninhabitable zone called Nonekimi, a man shouted at them not to slack off if they wanted their bonus. He ordered Leo, a man with glasses, to pick up the pace, to which Leo tiredly replied, yes. One of the men asked his friend why they had the jobless and inexperienced Leo in their party, and the friend replied that apparently, Leo had experience escaping from Nonekimi. Leo overheard their conversation and became angry. The unique dungeon, Nanakimin, has spread throughout the entire city, centered on Sakurada Hospital, and is a significantly dangerous level B dungeon. Leo knows that the bonus is good, but because the layout is complex and the clearing difficulty is high, no one has been able to clear it since it appeared. He couldn't clear it either, but he managed to escape and become a player. However, he didn't awaken a job, which determines one's role in that world, so he has been stuck working as a guide there for years. A man praised everyone for their efforts, and Luca, a jurist with a B rank, told everyone to keep up the exploration. Luca asked him about their current status, and he replied that they were in an ideal position. Then he explained that the area between Sadabori and the city center has only weak monsters and is rich in resources, so they can make a profit. Luca smiled and suggested heading for the center area, clearing the B-rank dungeon in one go. This made him nervous because he didn't want to risk his life, but Luca confidently insisted on leading the way. He told Luca to wait and explained that non ekumen is no ordinary B-rank dungeon. With information on the central area that is only 10 years old, it was impossible for them to clear it. He believed they should first gather data on the monsters there. All of a sudden, a hand swiftly shot towards him, surprising him as it grabbed his neck more tightly. Luca sternly told him to pay attention and that they were there to clear the dungeon, so he should stay quiet and do his job. Luca even called him a jobless underachiever, sweating nervously. He apologized to Luca and Luca eventually released his grip, noting that he was giving him special treatment because he had experience escaping. He agreed and suggested they proceed to the central area, though in his mind, he was thinking about waiting for an opportunity to escape. However, a sword tip was pointed at his face, and Luca asked him seriously if he had any ulterior motives. If he didn't lead the way, he knew what would happen to him, a worthless nobody. Trembling, he raised his hand and agreed to lead the way, fully aware that his situation was not looking good. Luca sheathed his sword and turned away, clearly annoyed, saying he had soiled his hand. Other players who had witnessed the exchange teased him, calling it lame and reminding him that as a jobless player, he should know better than to talk back to Luca, a B rank. Later, they reached their destination, and Luca asked him if this was the central area, but he silently called Luca an idiot in his mind. He knew they were in a nest area of monsters and planned to escape during the ensuing chaos once the battle began. Suddenly, one of the players called out to Luca, and they saw a B rank monster approaching. It growled at them, and the players were surprised to see there were so many of them. However, Luca confidently unleashed his firepower, instructing everyone to stay calm as he used his formidable fire magic to take down the monsters, reminding the players that they were just B-rank creatures, making it an easy victory. Leo was awestruck by Luca's strength, realizing he was nearly as powerful as an A-rank player, which made him envious. He thought to himself that he wished he could become that strong too. But then, he felt his detection ability reacting, leaving him puzzled. He sensed a massive approaching presence, so he anxiously informed Luca that something formidable was approaching and that they needed to leave quickly. However, Luca responded angrily, questioning how someone like him could detect such things, and asked him to give it a rest. Leo was about to explain when the ground started to crack, causing panic among him and the other players. The ground collapsed, and they all fell below. Once underground, Luca angrily grabbed his collar and called him useless, accusing him of leading them into a trap, and even threatened to harm him. However, other players shouted for Luca to look at a monster approaching, diverting his attention. Leo noticed that his detection ability had disappeared, leaving him wondering what was happening. Luca pushed him to the ground, acknowledging his impressive feat and mentioning that he would reprimand him later. The monster stopped as it approached and asked if they wanted to play. One of the players informed Luca that it seemed to be time for their mission, while another asked if it was a monster boss. The system presented them with their mission to eliminate the unidentified object within a set time limit and obtain the hidden treasure of the uninhabitable zone, Ankmeni. 
Once more, Luca unleashed his powerful fire magic and confidently told the monster that he would reduce it to ashes. However, Leo was stunned to witness the monster suddenly vanish, leaving the other players to question if Luca had defeated it. Luca assumed it must still be nearby, urging everyone to remain vigilant. Unbeknownst to him, the monster was reappearing behind them. It attacked them, playfully uttering, Mini. One of the players encouraged the group not to back down, assuring them it was nothing special, and the players began their attacks. Yet, the monster swiftly captured several players with its numerous hands and inquired if they wanted to play. It then threw the captured players to the ground in a simultaneous, exuberant, and teasing manner. Leo couldn't believe that it had taken their lives, and he noticed there was no information available about this monster, leaving him baffled about what was happening. Suddenly, the monster slammed its hands near Leo, launching him into the air and causing him to collide hard with the wall. As he fell to the ground, he was shocked to see the monster in front of him. The monster claimed it smelled something familiar and addressed Leo as daddy, asking if he was her father. This left Leo dumbfounded, as he wondered how he could have such a giant daughter. He realized this didn't make any sense at all. When the monster advised him to stay calm, Leo considered that perhaps there was a way out of this predicament. The monster agreed, lifting its clothing to reveal a large mouth on its belly, and suggested they go home. It excitedly shouted that she gets to go home with her daddy. Leo pondered how things had come to this point as the monster grabbed him, laughing. He shouted for it to stop and listen to her daddy. However, it still tossed him inside its enormous mouth, causing him to wonder if this was how he would meet his end, and believing it was the worst way to go. Then, the system congratulated him for unlocking his hidden job as a dread keeper, similar to a zoo or aquarium worker. Moments later, he slowly opened his eyes and examined his hand, realizing he hadn't been consumed. He looked around, questioning if he was back at his house. The news reporter on the television announced that it was the 30th of January in the year 210, and the time was 16. Leo grasped the significance of the date and time, realizing that this was five hours before the advent of Paradise Heaven. He wondered if he had somehow traveled back in time 10 years and if he possessed the ability to redo his life if he were to die. He excitedly cheered, believing his prayers had been answered and that his new life was beginning. He was too absorbed in his thoughts to notice something appearing behind him. Hands slowly emerged, and the monster from earlier addressed him as daddy, causing him to fall to the ground in shock. The monster mentioned that her tummy was empty, leaving Leo perplexed and anxious about what was happening. It stared hungrily at him, making him sweat in fear, fearing that he might be eaten again. Then, it extended its hand, grabbed him, and licked him, inquiring about dinner and introducing herself as Suzuko, explaining she was hungry. She asked him for food because she was hungry, and he hurriedly ran to get something, assuring her that he would make her something to eat. She sweetly agreed. A little while later, she asked him what it was, observing many buckets of chicken. He told her that it was all for her. She happily embraced him and expressed her love, leaving him wondering if it was a dream or something. Then, she reached for a piece of chicken, took a bite, and joyfully chewed, remarking that it was delicious. She continued eating while he was busy accessing the system, thinking that feeding her might fill her up. When he looked at his status, he was astonished to find that he had a job called Dread Keeper. He realized it was a unique job and wondered if he had awakened because of Suzuko. The system informed him that Suzuko was a B-rank boss, described as a kept monster corrupted zombie, and her current condition was imperfect and hungry. The system explained the kept monster skill, predation, stating that consuming a monster had a 30% chance of acquiring the monster's abilities. He contemplated what might happen if Suzuko's condition became complete and if he could control other bosses as well through her. The system issued a warning that Suzuko had entered starvation mode with her hunger level at only 50%. In such a state, she would consume any living thing without distinguishing between friend or foe. Suzuko sweetly hugged him and addressed him as daddy. The system revealed that she had a persistent hunger condition and asked him what to eat because she was still hungry. He thought that it had only been 5 minutes and wondered if normal food was not sufficient. He patted her head, recognizing that, for now, he needed to keep her in a good mood. He kindly told her that sometimes patience was necessary and he would allow her to eat to her heart's content. He thought about acting as a caring father, getting Suzuko's condition to completeness, and how clearing dungeons would become much easier. He envisioned those who had looked down on him in the past feeling ashamed. She couldn't believe that her daddy gave her pats, leaving him a bit confused. However, she tightly grabbed him, expressing her happiness and promising to be a good girl. Her grip was so strong that he started bleeding and asked her to put him down. Suddenly, the reporter on the television announced that something was happening just in time, startling both of them. The television started showing errors, and he exclaimed that it couldn't be. He looked out of the window in panic and noticed that the dungeon advent was earlier than expected. He couldn't believe it and watched as a green light emerged from the ground and reached towards the sky. He recognized the scene as the Black Forest Dungeon. Suddenly, something emerged from underground, and a monstrous creature with many eyes appeared before him. 
he fell to the ground, screaming in fear, and the system warned him that the Black Forest had manifested. He stood there, shocked, staring at it. Suzuko then appeared by his side, shouting that the creature was a pest and angrily telling it to go away. The creature vanished quickly, and the system showed that he was freed from the eyeball. Suzuko then playfully lifted him while exclaiming that her daddy was hers, and he shouted at her to put him down. She complied and asked if it was time to eat yet. He told her that he'd prepare something soon, wondering what was happening. Then he felt a painful sensation on his head, and the system warned him that the strange kept monster had been detected, and the Black Forest's curse had activated. The Black Forest's level increased, and Suzuko looked at him with concern. He wondered what the curse meant, and the system revealed that if the Black Forest wasn't cleared within 72 hours, he would be permanently confined to it. Suddenly, something emerged from underground, and tree-like monsters appeared. They growled at them, leaving him in a perplexing situation, especially since he hadn't even finished dealing with Suzuko. However, Suzuko exclaimed that they were food, which bewildered him. She enthusiastically shouted that they looked tasty. Suzuko leaped towards the monsters and began grabbing them one by one with her hands. She put one of the monsters in her mouth, and the system showed Leo that he gained experience points, and Suzuko's hunger level increased. She had consumed a yaokai of the trees named Kyo and acquired wild conversion with a duration time of 20 minutes. Suzuko enthusiastically exclaimed that they were super delicious and grabbed another Kyo from the ground. Leo realized that she could satisfy her hunger by eating monsters, and the system showed that her hunger level was now fully recovered. He knew he needed to address the curse, something he hadn't encountered before. He remembered that he was supposed to be in Sakurata City's non ekumen not Naru City's Black Forest. The difference was that Suzuko was there with him. Suzuko asked if he wanted some, but he declined, suggesting she should eat up. Leo began pondering if the dungeon aimed to eliminate Suzuko, which meant it was trying to eliminate her owner, him, through the curse. He realized that within 72 hours, he had to escape or potentially clear the dungeon. But he wondered how he and Suzuko could handle the vast forest. As he contemplated, he failed to notice the ground near him breaking. Suddenly, he heard something and was startled to find numerous Kyo surrounding him. Suzuko anxiously called out to him and used her wild conversion skill to fend off the Kyo launching an attack on him. She grabbed him and the Kyo, expressing concern about his well-being. He assured her that he was fine and commended her for doing a good job. However, he noticed that Suzuko had absorbed the Kyo's skill, and to his surprise, the Kyo started glowing. He warned her to be cautious and get away from them, but then a loud explosion occurred, causing the apartment building to shatter. Meanwhile, 24 hours after the Black Forest manifested, in Naru City, Luka tried to reassure the citizens not to be afraid. He claimed to know the enemy's weaknesses and stressed that as a beta tester, everyone should follow his orders. However, when the building collapsed, panic ensued, and people fled. Luka was surprised to face a rank 2 Kyo. One person questioned what the creature was, and another asked what they should do because it seemed different from the ones they had seen before. Luca tried to calm the situation by explaining that there was a way to deal with it. He took a deep breath and shouted job holder. Someone leaped from the building and charged towards the Kyo, striking it and causing the ground to break. When the dust settled, a woman stood atop the defeated Kyo. The rank F jurist, Hayashi Miki, confidently inquired if it was a rank 2 Kyo and assured everyone that it was an easy challenge. Luka echoed her confidence, reminding the citizens to follow his orders for an easy victory. The people cheered, grateful that it was dead, making Miki realize that Luka was adept at convincing people. She couldn't believe that she had only known him for a day. Miki recalled being cornered by the Kyo and questioned Luka, asking who he was and why he had helped her. Luka explained that he was gathering allies to clear the dungeon and considered a job holder like her to be especially valuable. He introduced himself as a beta tester and asked her if she was interested in becoming a hero with him. However, Miki had doubts as she couldn't fathom an ordinary Salaryman like Luka becoming a hero. She also noticed that it was an f rank dungeon, and the monsters were becoming stronger, making her skeptical about the ease of clearing it as Luka had suggested. On top of the tree, Suzuko excitedly declared that it was fun and awesome. She asked Leo if they could do it again, but he replied that he had enough fun. He recognized that Suzuko had saved him, but at the current rate, he might end up dead. Suddenly, he heard Luka shouting to the people that if they wanted to clear the dungeon, they should follow his orders. Seeing Luka from 10 years earlier, Leo realized that Luka had still been a newbie at that time but was skilled. He considered that teaming up with Luka to clear the dungeon might not be a bad idea. They felt a powerful vibration, and Leo anxiously asked Suzuko what was causing it. She responded that it was food, pointing at the Kyo climbing up the tree and deeming them as tasty. Leo couldn't believe that the Kyo were crawling up the tree. People on the ground were puzzled by the tree's strange behavior. Mickey thought that the citizens were overreacting, and Luca warned that things were not looking good. They observed the tree slowly breaking, and Luca called out to Mickey, shouting for her to run. Unfortunately, the tree fell before she could escape. 
When the smoke cleared, Leo realized that he was still alive and felt a soft sensation. However, Mickey called him a punk and pointed a sharp dagger at him, warning him to stop moving around. Fearfully, Leo claimed it was just a minor accident. She pulled him out from her chest, asking if he had fallen from the tree and scolding him for his nerve. Leo tried to explain it was a coincidence, as he had been nearby. However, Suzuko broke the ground, asking where he was and where he had gone. Mickey questioned what was happening, but then Suzuko appeared in front of them and announced that she had found him, surprising them both. Leo was about to take action, but Mickey activated her power, asserting that she would handle the situation and protect him from the monster, stating that heroes don't run from danger. Leo was left feeling confused. After Mickey finished preparing her weapon, she glared at Suzuko and teasingly challenged her to come at her, leaving Leo wondering about the unexpected turn of events. He realized that Mickey had mistaken Suzuko for an enemy. Mickey jumped toward a confused Suzuko and used her skill to trap Suzuko inside. Leo shouted a warning to look out, which surprised Suzuko. Mickey thought she had Suzuko trapped, but Suzuko simply slapped her on the side and excitedly asked Leo if he had been worried about her. Leo smiled, knowing that he wasn't worried about Suzuko. He hurried to where Mickey had fallen, asking if she was alright and hoping she wasn't dead. He was relieved to find that Mickey was unconscious. Leo scratched his head, contemplating what to do. Suzuko asked if she could eat Mickey, but Leo firmly told her not to eat people. He carefully lifted Mickey, thinking that if he remembered correctly, she was a jurist in Luca's party. He considered that if he saved her, Luca might let him join the party without any issues. However, he realized that it wouldn't work if they found out about Suzuko. Leo asked Suzuko for a favor to hide for a while. Suzuko questioned why, and Leo responded by asking her the same question. Then, he promised to treat her to something delicious if she hid well and searched for tasty things. Suzuko eagerly agreed and promptly disappeared. Leo sweetly told her that he would search for her treats, so she should be a good girl and wait. The system showed him that the effects of the curse had significantly weakened, making him realize that the curse had weakened, perhaps because Suzuko was hidden. He contemplated the situation, thinking that if that was the case, he would have Suzuko remain hidden, get Luka to find the boss, and then have Suzuko defeat the boss. A moment later, Mickey woke up and sat up, feeling her head hurt. Leo reassured her that she was awake and expressed his relief that she was okay. Mickey asked what had happened with the monster, and Leo told her that it had run off somewhere, thanks to her help. He respectfully referred to Mickey as older sister. Confused, Mickey admitted that she didn't remember everything clearly but recognized that it had been dangerous. She suggested they go somewhere safe, and Leo smiled, thinking that everything was going as he had planned. Mickey asked for his name, and knowing that they would eventually find out about Suzuko, Leo decided to use a fake name for the time being. He introduced himself as Himogen and asked for her name. She revealed that her name was Hayashi Mickey and invited him to call her Mickey. She offered her hand to him, and he accepted it, expressing that it was nice to meet her. Suzuko watched them and felt a familiar sensation. Leo quietly called Suzuko and instructed her to follow them discreetly so they could find food. Suzuko agreed without hesitation. Mickey reminded Leo not to get separated, and he assured her that he would stay close. Suzuko silently followed them from behind. Later, in an abandoned building, Luca asked for the mission report and inquired about Teams 3 and 4's progress in finding Mickey. A team member reported that they were still searching for her. Luca wondered what Mickey was up to and shouted for everyone to hurry up and find her, acknowledging that without her, their whole party might have been wiped out. The team member assured Luca that they would definitely find her and asked him to calm down. However, the truth was that Luca was more concerned about Mickey's extraordinary ability and begged silently that she be safe. Suddenly, Mickey entered the building with Leo and greeted Luca. Luca stood up in excitement and warmly welcomed her back. He asked Mickey if the boy next to her was her little brother, but Mickey clarified that he was not her brother, though she had saved him from a dangerous situation. Suzuko playfully told Leo that only her daddy could see her. Leo greeted Luca and introduced himself as Himogen, concealing his true identity in his mind and implying that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. Leo asked Luca if he could join his party and Luca welcomed him, saying he could join because he was with Mickey. However, Luca couldn't help but find Leo's face seriously creepy, raising suspicions in his mind. To learn more about Leo's identity, Luca decided to use his exclusive skill for analysis. Luca's skill started to analyze Leo while Leo asked if there was something he could help with. As Luca's skill analyzed Leo, it encountered an unknown factor in its analysis. Luca patted Leo's head and commented that it was good to see him motivated. He introduced himself as boss. However, Luca's skill still failed to identify Leo. Leo replied with an okay while Luca wondered why he couldn't see any information about him, and all the tests he ran on him failed. 
Luca praised Leo for his efforts and suggested that they see. Leo was confused, but then the system issued a warning. Luca realized that the system had failed every time and couldn't determine Leo's identity. Luca suddenly felt pain in his head and saw Suzuko behind Leo, warning him not to peek. Leo asked if Luca was alright, and Luca shouted in fear, remaining silent for a moment as he looked at Leo. Mickey asked Luca what was wrong, and Suzuko told Leo that she had just startled Luca a little, making Leo realize that it was Suzuko's doing. They then heard a loud noise that startled them all. Luca panicked and asked about the loud noise. As he began to walk toward the source of the sound, a loud explosion occurred in front of them. Luca couldn't believe that the factory had exploded and wondered what was happening. One of the men shouted that the tree was moving, and Suzuko asked if they should run. However, Leo whispered to her, telling her to wait and keeping his detection ability active. He sensed that the monsters were agitated and wondered what had excited them. Then he noticed the fire on the wall and shouted for everyone to listen to him. He told them to move away from the fire because rank 3 timber yakai were approaching. A monster slowly emerged from the fire, and a timber yakai with rank 3 abilities appeared, launching its roots to attack them. Everyone screamed in horror. Luca was surprised to see a rank 3 timber yakai and wondered how Leo knew about it, especially since Leo was unidentifiable and well informed. This made Luca consider whether Leo had savior potential like him. Luca imagined Leo taunting him, suggesting he could defeat him and calling him old news. He wondered if Leo had deliberately tested him and aimed to make a fool of him to take his place as the leader. The system showed Luca that the savior bonus for defeating the boss of the Black Forest had increased to 10,800, confirming his suspicion that Leo planned to become the leader and claim the bonus. Luca generated something, thinking about the new player protection period that allowed only one savior per dungeon. He swore to make Leo regret entering his dungeon and shouted for the others to follow his orders. He commanded them to start a counter-attack. Mickey warned Luca to watch out, but it was too late. The timber yakai attacked Luca and the others in the front with its roots, causing a loud explosion. Fortunately, Mickey shielded Leo while telling him that they couldn't rely on Luca and the others anymore. She noted that she was reaching her limit as well and advised him to get everyone out while he still could. Mickey hugged him tightly and asked if he understood, to which Leo replied, okay. However, Leo found it odd that the timber yakai were still evolving despite the reduced curse. As a swarm of flaming yakai approached them, Mickey quickly pushed Leo behind her and urged him to run. Leo hesitated, finding it difficult to flee even when told to do so. However, Suzuko, who had been hiding using her skill, couldn't resist her hunger any longer. She revealed herself and excitedly shouted for treats. Then she pounced toward the approaching yakai. Mickey was shocked to see the same monster from before and observed Suzuko enjoying her whole roast barbecue. She watched as Suzuko devoured the flaming yakai while Leo scolded her for being more interested in food than his well-being. Leo was concerned that the curse would grow stronger again. The system revealed a new ability called Synchronization, which allowed him to temporarily gain a kept monster's skill for 20 minutes, with a limit of 4 uses per day. Leo considered his noob status, realizing he only had one skill and wondering if other monsters would see him as their daddy. However, he believed that ordinary monsters were likely too simple-minded to recognize him in that way. He pondered whether he could control the boss of the Black Forest and if doing so would break the curse. Just as he was contemplating his next move, someone grabbed his shoulder. It was Mickey, warning him of the danger and urging him to escape while he had the chance. However, Leo had a different plan in mind. He explained to Mickey that, while the monsters were distracted, he would attempt to defeat the boss. He recognized it as a gamble but believed it was their best chance. Leo also suggested that Luca might know the boss's location, and with the timber yakai continuously evolving, they needed to act quickly. Mickey agreed with his plan and took him in her arms, running swiftly while telling him to hold on tight. Meanwhile, in Naru's city's underground ruins, a monster lady with long hair sweetly declared that she had found him, referring to Leo as her daddy. On the other hand, Luca was facing the excited boss and told everyone that with how fast those plants grow, and the smell of flowers meant it had to be the boss making everyone shout that they knew they could count on Luca. But Luca thought, while the timber yakai is focused on down below, he'll slip in, defeat the boss, and clear the dungeon because he cares more about the bonus than that little shrimp which is Leo. But suddenly, a few of the people held their head in pain, making Luca wonder what the heck happens. Then he saw a few people's eyes begin to change green and become monsters, making the unsane people panic and ask what was going on and if that wasn't supposed to be a level F dungeon. He told them not to panic, knowing that he had to stay calm, and told them that the difficulty only went up a bit, so they should proceed. 
one of the men worriedly asked him if they even stood a chance and told him that even against the rank 3 timber yaokai, they were defeated. He was angry hearing it and cut off the man's head, wondering how that man dares give orders to the savior and thought that the man was an eyesore. The system showed Luca that he earned the level E job owner and PC subjugation bonus is 1,300 experience points. Also, level E job acquisition is possible and asked him if he will acquire the job card. The people were shocked at his action and asked him what had he done. But he just thought that the bonus for defeating the Timber Yaokai was a measly few hundred. But he got 1,000 for killing one nobody NPC. He knows that he can't subdue the boss and earn his bonus, so he thinks if that is the case, he'll just earn points from all of them. A moment later, Leo was about to ask something to Mickey, but she understood what it was and agreed with him. Then she told him that without a doubt about it, he could see the traces of the battle. Suddenly, someone shouted that Luca was out of his mind, so they should run, making them surprised, and Mickey immediately ran to where the voice was coming from. She was surprised to see a lot of dead people on the ground and Luca holding a dead man in his hand. She called him and shouted, asking him what is he doing, but he just calmly looked at her and told her that she come. He faced her while telling her that she had got it wrong. She furiously reminded him that he promised they'd all clear the dungeon together, but he was killing allies and told him that he had lost it. He told her that they were the ones who went crazy and asked her if she didn't smell the scent of flowers. She asks him what about it, and he replies that if she breathes it in, she becomes the boss's underling, which is why he kills them. Then he lifted his sword and gave it to her, telling her that he was actually an underling too, so she had to kill him. She worriedly asked how it came to it and if they couldn't defeat the boss together, but he shouted that it was impossible. Still, she asked him if he wasn't a beta tester and if he didn't know another way, then told him not to give up. He told her that if she didn't kill him, there was one other way. She asked him what it was, and he replied that it was he would kill her and launched an attack on her. He pierced the sword into her stomach and pinned her down on the ground. He teasingly told her that she was just an NPC and asked her how dare she presume to give advice to him, the protagonist. He stabbed harder with the sword into her stomach and told her that he shouldn't have expected anything and explained to her that he saved her because he wanted a high-level job. He teasingly told her that it was too bad for her because she could at least fulfill one final role. Then he activated his job card, and the system asked him if he wanted to forcibly steal a job card from the target who was still living, to which he agreed, and the system began to force job card extraction on her. A moment later, he got Mickey's role job and shouted that it was incredible to have a level S job. But then someone called Mickey's name sweetly, telling her to wait up, making Luca surprised and wonder what that voice was. But when he looked back, he just saw Leo asking what is all the fuss about. When Leo saw everything, he asked Luca if he came at a bad time. Luca replied that it was perfect timing and asked him what is it that he wanted. Leo awkwardly asked Luca back what is he talking about. But Luca told him that it was no use playing dumb and that he was a better actor than him. Then Luca teasingly told him not to be so tense, making him notice that Luca's behaving strangely. He felt bad for Mickey but decided to get out of there because he knew that where there's life, there's hope. Suddenly, Luca used his skill while telling him that he was not going anywhere and he had locked him with his will. He noticed that it is a physical manifestation of the will, the precursor to an awakened job, making him wonder how, knowing that Luca doesn't have a job. Luca told him that he thought for sure he was aiming to usurp his position, but to think he wouldn't spare a glance for Mickey's level S ability, he was stupid. He wondered what Luca was going on about and was surprised to hear that Mickey's level is S because it was news to him. Luca told him that the reason the dungeon changed was because both of them were time slipped called saviors and asked him if he increased the difficulty. He was surprised to hear that Luca's a time slipper, and he knows that there are all kinds of time slippers, weirdos who save people just for fun, brutes who kill people virtuously, heroes who sacrifice themselves for others, loonies who take pleasure in the dungeons, and freakish players who are essentially calamities. Their abilities are full of unknowns, and if Luca is one, then it all fits. Luca asked him what his objective status was and if it was business or perhaps a clear bonus, but he knew that Luca would kill him eventually, so he needed to buy time until Suzuko caught up. He put his hand on his head and told Luca that he was surprised he saw through him. Then he told Luca that he was right because it was all his doing. Luca replied that now they were talking, and he told Luca that he snuck into another savior's dungeon when it opened, causing the difficulty to change, as well as the value of the bonus. Luca told him that he must be pretty pleased that his plan's going well, making him smile, thinking that Luca believes everything he was saying, so he planned to act the part thoroughly. Then he laughed and asked Luca if shouldn't he be thanking him because thanks to him, that dungeon was even more thrilling. Luca agreed that it was intriguing and that the bonus had changed already, but he just smiled, thinking that Luca was a moron. Suddenly, Mickey furiously called Leo and asked him if he was in it together, then she told them that they were both insane. 
Luca kicked Mickey's face and furiously told her to shut her mouth, but Leo was frustrated that even Mickey took him seriously. Luca obtained a level S Juris job card, and he was amazed at the power of a job. Luca thinks that compared to waiting to awaken, stealing is a piece of cake, and it is a mysterious experience. Leo asks Luca if they shall cooperate from there on out, but suddenly they hear a loud scream, making Luca panic. He is surprised to see a swarm of possessed people and Kios launching toward him, making him ask Leo what did he do. Luca asks him if he wants him to cooperate with him who called the monsters. When he was about to reply, Luca laughed hard and shouted that, in the end, it was the best a child could come up with. Then Luca jumped toward him and grabbed a spear to attack, making him surprised. Luca teasingly told him that there was no way he'd work with someone like him. Luca attacked him, which created a loud explosion. The smoke slowly disappeared, and Luca was pinned to the ground by Suzuko, while shouting at her to let him go. Luca told her to stop and that he was the savior, so she should let him go right away. But she told Luca that she didn't need a savior and she came to find her daddy. Luca was surprised to hear her and looked up at him while acting like he couldn't believe it. He confidently told Luca that he was Suzuko's daddy, making Luca angry and shouting that he'll cooperate and he'll work with him. But then Suzuko slammed Luca on the ground hard in anger and shouted that her daddy isn't a child. Then she let go of Luca to tell him that she was sleepy and asked him if they could go to bed. He replied, sure, but told her that before it, she should take care of those guys while pointing to a swarm of monsters behind them. She replied, okay, and started to devour the monsters, while Leo was wondering how many of those monsters are there. He thought that the silver lining is that they haven't encountered the boss yet, but he decided that for now, they should get out of there. He asked Mickey if she is alright, but Mickey answered like a crazy human being, making him confused and wonder what happened. Suddenly, a huge shadow appeared behind him, and Suzuko called him. Suzuko grabbed him gently and asked her if she was all done. But Suzuko just hugged him and lay on the ground while saying that she was sleepy and that she would protect her daddy, so he should stay with her. He tapped Suzuko's forehead, trying to wake her up, but she didn't wake up, making him realize that something's up with Suzuko too and wonders how she was going to protect him while she was sleeping. He also noticed that the monsters aren't active anymore, and even his curse disappeared. Suddenly, someone told him that to be unaffected by her showed why that girl would call him daddy. He was surprised to realize that it was the boss of the Black Forest, and the system showed him that the synchronization randomly selected the monster's ability. The rank C advanced boss, Whisper Flower, laughed at him and told him that they were both her prey. He activated his ghost transformation for 20 minutes and avoided Whisper Flower's route that was grabbing sleeping Suzuko. He knew that he could get away, but Suzuko couldn't. Then Whisper Flower told him that he can't get away, making him surprised that she found him. Whisper Flower explained to him that the plants there were all her eyes, and the flower fragrance he inhaled was part of her too. He was frustrated to realize that he wouldn't be able to get away and asked her what she was after, but she just told him to look at Suzuko because Suzuko was beautiful when she was still, lovely, and strong like her, and she was particular about her food. He asked her if her goal is to eat Suzuko and thought that she was after Suzuko from the beginning, not him. She told him that she had eaten Suzuko's eye before and gained intelligence. Also, she has to continue evolving in order to regain his favor. He asked her if she means by his a human, but she angrily told him not to dare insult him because he is not like him and he is the creator of monsters, the god of monsters, so he, who only keeps a monster, is just an imposter. He wondered what she meant by imposter and was surprised that she even knew he was a keeper. Whisper Flower told him that Suzuko is his daughter, and yet Suzuko calls him daddy, and he even grants her power. Then she laughed while telling him that she couldn't believe he manipulated a monster and asked him if he wanted to mimic him. He told her that the reason he was made to keep monsters was for her food and asked her why didn't she just say so. She smiled and told him that as she expected, he was clever and if he became her slave, he won't have to die. He laughingly told her that it was a nice offer and then he raised one of his fingers and told her that he refused. Whisper Flower laughs at him and attacks him, telling him that he has no say in the matter. Her roots goes through him, making it easy for him to grab onto them. The system shows him that the ghost transformation has 10 minutes remaining. He knows this is bad because his skill time is running out, and he needs to wake Suzuko up somehow. She orders her monster to capture him and take him alive. Then the possessed people and Kyo's run toward him, making him clench his teeth in frustration. He runs past them while wondering if there is another way. Then he remembers Mickey's job card and thinks that if Luca could use it, surely he could too. So, he grabs the card from the ground and acquires it. But the system shows him that the job awakening is unavailable, making him worriedly ask if they are kidding him. Then his ghost transformation expires, and he sees monsters launching toward him. But he knows he can't give up yet. He activates the synchronization, and the system shows him that he activated the ghost transformation Eye of Truth, Monster Devouring. 
Whisper asks him if he is relying on Suzuko's abilities again and shouts at him that she won't let him. She attacks him with the eye on her chest, making him feel dizzy, and his synchronization is locked as well. The monsters grab him while he shouts in pain and feels that his synchronization is forcibly aborted. Whisper Flower teasingly tells him to fall into a deep slumber and die within her memories. He sweats, wondering if it's Whisper Flower's true form, while looking at her with his eye of truth. She teasingly tells him that his body is hers and calls him a slave. The system congratulates him for discovering Deep World Surprise, Spiritual Corruption Depth 1. He knows that spiritual corruption is unique to upper tier dungeons and wonders if it was really a level F dungeon because it's calamities on parade. He remembers that in his previous life, he was killed by Suzuko, making him wonder if he was going to die because of Suzuko this time too, and if meeting her is good fortune or misfortune. But then he sees himself somewhere, making him surprised and realizes that he is not dead. He also notices that the screen is still active, making him wonder where he is. Suddenly, he hears someone shouting that it's a masterpiece, and he realizes the sound is coming from the door behind him. He grabs the doorknob and opens it, then he sees a man shouting that it's truly his greatest masterpiece. He notices that the scene in front of him is all blurry and wonders if it is a projected memory. The man shouts that they should rejoice in his newfound existence and join their will to his own. Then the man orders something on the paper to rise before him, making him wonder if the man has a seventh grade disorder because it reminds him of himself back in the day. When the man shouts for something to emerge and calls it his greatest masterpiece, something comes out of the paper on the ground, and the man sweetly tells it to come out, making him sweat and worry. A girl slowly comes out of the paper and Suzuko asks the man what she is. The man tells her that her name will be Suzuko, and she is confused. The man tells her to take his hand, to which she does. Then the man hugs her while telling her that from now on, she should call him daddy, to which she agrees and sweetly calls the man daddy. Leo is frustrated, imagining Suzuko's current form and wonders if that little girl really is Suzuko. He told himself to calm down and thought that, in other words, he was within Suzuko's memories. He notices that Suzuko is drastically different and hears the man telling her that she is her daddy's grand opus and asks her if she is ready. The man patted Suzuko's head, and she was confused, asking what she should be ready for. The man replied that she should be ready to join her daddy in saving the world. And then they both disappeared, making him surprised and realized that there was too little information. He wondered what that SGD guy was after. Suddenly, something appeared behind him, making him surprised and realized that it looked like it was just the opening act and obviously a lure. He grabs the doorknob and when he opens it, he hears Suzuko telling the man that it's been so long and she missed him so much. The man tells Suzuko that he has something to show her, and from her daddy's newest research, she is able to transform all things. Then the man introduces Suzuko to the whisper flower in the container and explains that it's a flower with animal characteristics. He realizes that it is the boss of the black forest, and then the man tells Suzuko that it's missing something, and unlike his perfect Suzuko, it is incomplete. The man sighs, thinking that it's a conundrum. Suzuko hugs her daddy and tells him that she will help and asks if there is anything she can do. Leo thinks it's a heartwarming scene, but he still wonders why Suzuko transformed. The man thanks Suzuko for helping and tells her that he needs her power but she should tell him if she is unwilling, and he'll find someone else. Suzuko tells her daddy that she is willing and asks what she should do. The man replies that he wants something she has, something like her eye, which surprises Leo. Suzuko sweetly replies to the man, okay, and then she grabs her eye, causing him to feel the pain too. She gives her eye to her daddy and tells the man that in that way, he doesn't need to ask someone else. She asks if she's a good girl while he kneels on the ground in so much pain. The man patted Suzuko's head and told her that she was a good girl. She happily shouted that she was happy to help her daddy, making him shout that they couldn't be serious. The man lifted her eye while telling Suzuko to witness the power of her eye. Then he dropped the eye on the whisper flower and ordered it to consume the eye. The flower did as he ordered, transforming into a monster with one red eye in the center. Suzuko shouted that it worked, and the man told her that it was all thanks to her. He ran toward them, calling the man a jackass, and launched his fist to attack him. He shouted that the man was an inhuman monster for using his own child for experiments. He punched the man's face, but they disappeared, leaving him alone on the floor in pain. He wondered what was up with Suzuko's father, shouting that he was just a criminal. But he was more confused about why he felt Suzuko's pain. Suddenly, three more doors appeared in front of him, and then a lot of doors surrounded him, making him surprised to witness the doors multiplying. He knew that he hadn't touched them, but they were opening on their own. After Suzuko's left eye, her left hand, then her heart, right leg, left leg, and even her memories were eaten. He laughed crazily and asked if Suzuko was a monster's feet. His feet and hand disappeared because Suzuko's feet and hand were also gone. 
He called her daddy hopelessly and asked where her daddy was because she missed him. Then the man asks Suzuko how she has been, making Suzuko surprised. She happily crawls to her daddy while asking if he came to see her. But the man tells her that he brought the family with him, pointing at the monsters, and tells her that they are happy to see her. The monsters immediately run toward her and surround her, while he tells her daddy that they are all strangers and asks if he doesn't need her anymore. The man replies that she is beyond repair and it can't be helped. She should forgive her daddy while she is being eaten by the monsters. She shouts that it hurts and tells her daddy not to abandon her. Leo laughs hard and tells Suzuko not to be afraid because he is in pain too. He also tells her that she was deceived by him and that man because they were both fake daddies. That's why he will become her real daddy. Whisper Flower is surprised to see her roots shining red, and he calls Whisper Flower ugly, telling her it's good to see her hideous face. Whisper Flower is pissed and asks him how he regained his consciousness. Then she tells him that she will show him hell again, but he just teasingly tells her to go for it and calls her a monster. She furiously attacks him with her eye on the chest once again, teasingly telling him that she wonders how long his attitude will last. His eye of truth bleeds in pain, and he feels that it hurts, but compared to Suzuko's pain, it is nothing. Then he continuously says synchronization, and the system shows him that the monster devouring skill is activating. But there is a risk of spiritual corruption. The ghost transformation is activating, and the triple synchronization, with a rate of 60% spiritual corruption depth 5, is activated. He tells them that he is back and they should quit eating already. Because if they are going to eat Suzuko, he'll eat all of them and asks them if it's fair. Then he jumps to where Suzuko is being eaten by the monsters, grabs one of the monsters' eyes, and pulls it out. Then he eats it, telling them to give him a taste. He proceeds to eat the monster's body too. The other monster sees him and jumps toward him to attack him. But he just tells them that they taste like crap. A moment later, he was back being trapped in Whisper Flower's roots while the system showed him that his synchronization rate was 70%, with a spiritual pollution depth of 20. He told Whisper Flower that he hadn't had enough, so she should let him eat more beasts. She asks him if he wants to be put to sleep that badly and tells him that he should enter her memory and die. Inside, he told Suzuko that she didn't need to be afraid anymore because he was there now. Suzuko felt so warm and asked if he was her daddy. He replied that he wasn't before, but now he was her daddy. But then the man who had a voice like Whisper Flower told him that it was just a memory. He just told him that it was hurtful. Whisper Flower explained to him that it was a memory constructed by her force of will, so even if he ate her, he'd die there and absorb a monster's force of will. She asked him if he thought a mere human could emerge unscathed. She also told him that in a sense, their force of will is poison and asked him how long he would last. The system showed him that his synchronization rate was 90%, with a spiritual corruption depth of 30, and he told Whisper Flower that he is Suzuko's father and Suzuko saved him. He also mentioned that her memory is revolting. Whisper Flower let him come out while telling him that he was insane and asking him what the hell he was. But he just sweetly told her not to be so scared and that she could just put him to sleep like before. Suddenly, Whisper Flower lets him go, making him confused, and he asks her why she is letting go. Then he sweetly tells her to hurry up and asks her if she isn't going to use them, making her shocked and sweat uncontrollably in fear. Still, he tells her to hurry up and let him see that guy because he'd kill him thousands of times over. Otherwise, he wonders who he is going to share Suzuko's and his pain with. The system shows him that the force of his will has overcome the boss, so he achieved rearing condition. Whisper Flower launches her hand to attack him while shouting at him to be silent and slams him hard on the ground. The system asks him if he will keep the level C boss. Then she feels that she can't move because Leo's force of will is too strong, making her wonder how he could make it. He tells her that it was her force of will that made him stronger, and if she didn't play with him, he clicked no to the system and told her that he guessed he'd have her play with Suzuko. Then he calls Suzuko. Suzuko wakes up and angrily asks him who did it to him because it was unforgivable. But he just tells her that he is fine and she should go play with the lady in front of her. Also, if she gets bored, she can eat her, making Suzuko happy, and she replies that she would do it. Then Suzuko asks Whisper Flower who hurt her daddy, and Whisper Flower replies that it wasn't her. She just asks her if she won't tell, and she replies that Leo did it to himself. Suzuko becomes angry and shouts that she is lying. Then she slams Whisper Flower on the ground while shouting that lying is bad. On the other hand, he asks Mickey if she is okay, but Mickey just asks him back what in the world he is. He replies that what she sees is what she gets and that he is a willful daughter's father. Then he grabs the sword in her stomach while telling her that it would hurt, but she should bear with it. Then he pulls it out, making her cry out in pain. But she immediately pins him down and asks him if he is still going to lie when he was working with that madman, Luca. Then she raises the sword while shouting that she is going to kill him. But he tells her that it was only Luca who deceived her, so she should believe him. Besides, if he was an enemy, he wouldn't staunch her wound. She is surprised to hear it and notices that her wound bleeding has stopped. 
he tapped the sword away from him while telling her that it was a temporary measure and she should first move her sword. She panickingly apologized to him and explained that she misunderstood, while Suzuko happily ate whisper flour on the side. He asked her if she was okay and if there was any change in her mind or body. She replied that not really and that she felt great right now. He asked her about her job card and told her that Luca pulled her job out, which meant her power had been stolen. She panicked and worriedly asked him what she should do. But he told her that there was a way, but it came with a risk, and if she would lend him her strength. He was okay with helping her. She agreed and asked him what she should do. He couldn't believe it was quick, but she told him that he had helped her, and she trusted him. He worriedly understood her and wondered if Mickey was pure or naive. Then he called Suzuko, and Suzuko immediately crawled toward him. Suzuko, who was chewing, asked him what it was, and Mickey was down on the ground in fear, feeling intense pressure. But she realized that Leo said she was her daddy, which meant that the monster was Leo's daughter. He told Suzuko that he had a request for her, and she replied that she would do anything he wanted. He asked her about that lady, Whisper Flower, and she replied that she had already eaten her. He told her that he'd give her something tastier and asked her if she could spit that lady out for a minute. Suzuko replied, okay, and unbuttoned her dress. Mickey covered his eyes in shyness and told him not to look. But when Suzuko showed her huge mouth in the belly and said that the lady was still there, Mickey was stunned back on the ground in shock. He told Suzuko that she was a good girl, and Suzuko put down a wet Whisper Flower on the ground. He walked closer to Whisper Flower and bent down in front of her, telling Mickey that his request for her was to obliterate Whisper Flower. But Whisper Flower furiously told them not to take her lightly. Suddenly, the monsters growled at them, and they all ran toward them to attack. Mickey couldn't believe that those people had come back to life and shouted that there were too many. Suzuko asked him if she could eat them, but he told her that there was no need for it and asked Whisper Flower if she was all done. She shoutingly told him that he was underestimating her and laughingly said that when she died, he was going with her. Then she told him to go ahead and that he should do his best to survive. He confidently replied, yes, and showed his power, then released it to the possessed humans and monsters, making them stop moving. Mickey excitedly shouted that they stopped moving and was about to ask him what he did, but she was shocked at him and asked him what happened to his face. He frowned with one eye half covered and replied that it was the risk he mentioned. Suzuko told him that her daddy looked so cool. He explained to Mickey that spiritual corruption is something that only happens in high-tier dungeons, and of course, there is also a method to reduce the corruption rate. Mickey grabbed his hand and worriedly asked him if he was okay. He replied that he was just fine, and she patted his head while telling him that he was like a little brother to her. He thinks his mental age is higher than Mickey's. Then he told Mickey that Whisper Flower was the solution while Whisper Flower was trying to get away. He explained to Mickey that there are two kinds of dungeons, mission, and exploration. In exploration dungeons, job holders can enter and leave freely, and the Black Forest is the latter. Originally, as long as they had a job, they could leave at any time. But because of Luca, the dungeon changed, and the difficulty went from level F to C. He also told Mickey that Luca brainwashed the members and made them fight because he wanted a bonus and he stole her job. But in reality, he knows that the dungeon changed because of Suzuko, but he thinks it's better to keep that a secret from Mickey. Suzuko grabbed Whisper Flower and teasingly told her that she couldn't get away. Mickey told him that, in other words, Luca's objective in defeating the boss is because of his selfishness. He told Mickey that level C bosses drop an item, and it is what she needs right now, to which she agreed. She told him to leave the rest to her. Mickey sweetly said hi to Suzuko and told her that she was going to defeat Whisper Flower. So, if she didn't mind, she should let her down, to which Suzuko sweetly agreed and put Whisper Flower down. Then Mickey stabs her, making her shriek in pain, and the system shows that the boss of the Black Forest has died, and the dungeon is clear. It was also cleared by Hayashi Mickey, but the system shows that identification was an error because she was a non-player, making him guess that the system wouldn't acknowledge Mickey without a job. Then the system shows that it's cleared by him, making him stunned in surprise. Mickey tells him that she defeated it, and he thanks her. Then he tells her that he'd like to keep his identity a secret. Mickey agrees since he's asking, but asks him why. The system asks him if he'd like to hide his player information. To which he replies, yes, and the system tells him to input his player ID. He guesses that he'll go with a player ID named Keeper, and then the system begins to calculate and shows him that a bonus will be distributed after the calculation is complete. He tells her that before it, he should grant Mickey's wish. Then he grabs something on Whisper Flower, making Mickey disgusted and asks him what he's doing. He grabs the small green ball and shouts that it's the boss's item, a sprite-type monster core. Mickey asks him how he uses it and if it's not by ingesting it. He creepily says she's right, making her sweat and asks him if he's joking. She's about to tell him that he's asking a bit much, but then she coughs out blood, making him worriedly call her name. 
Suzuko asks him if that person is dead and if she can eat her, to which he replies no. Then he asked Mickey if she's okay, and she replied that she couldn't feel her arms and legs. She asks him if she's going to die. He tells her that it's alright and he's going to help her. He uses his power on the sprite type core while telling Mickey to hang on. Then he puts the core in her mouth, telling her that he won't let her die. Mickey swallows it, and he notices that it's working because the elemental power around them is gathering. He knows that among the types of cores, gold cores are valued at over 2 million, and by removing the boss's power of will, they can acquire pure elemental power. Before, there were severe conflicts over those items, but then he sees the reaction of Mickey, making him wonder if Mickey is being controlled by the elemental power instead. Suddenly, Mickey releases a powerful power, making him throw away, but fortunately, Suzuko catches him in time. She furiously tells him that Mickey did something horrible to her daddy, which is unforgivable. Then Suzuko asks him if she can eat Mickey, but he reminds her that she promised not to eat people. Suzuko creepily tells him that he's so kind and asks him what they should do. He notices that Suzuko's aura is different from before and wonders if it's because of the changes to his body. He thinks Suzuko might eat him too if he answers poorly. He asks Suzuko if it gets dangerous, and she'll protect him. He knows that, at any rate, he needs to soothe Suzuko. She replies that she would protect her daddy. He knows that Suzuko's problem will have to wait and wonders how he should wake Mickey. He considers asking Suzuko but decides not to do it, knowing that Suzuko is a boss and it's too dangerous. So he uses his power instead. But it's no good because Mickey is too far away for his power to reach her. He also knows that at that rate, Mickey's body won't last, and on top of it, the side effect is getting worse. He realizes that he'll have to depend on Suzuko after all. Then he tells Suzuko to lend him a hand, and she asks him what she should do. He replies that he wants her to throw him over to Mickey, and she excitedly replies, okay. She grabs him and swings him to the back, making him tell her to be slow. But she just throws him hard while shouting for him to fly. He told her that it wasn't slow, but she did well. Then he forcibly entered Mickey's barrier and slammed her down on the ground with him. He shook her and called her name to wake her up, but when she didn't move, he slapped her in the face in a hurry, making him snap back and ask her what happened. He was glad that she finally woke up and told her that she was about to become a real plant person. She shyly looked at her destroyed clothes and told him not to look at her. He told her that it was alright and he didn't see anything. She asked him if his hand was corrupted by the progress of the spiritual and if he was okay. But suddenly, Suzuko jumped toward Mickey, calling her an evil woman and telling her that she won't forgive her. He told Suzuko to cut it out because Mickey was her daddy's friend, and it was the path he chose, so she shouldn't worry. Then he threw the card back to Mickey, and she caught it by surprise, knowing that it was her job card. He told her that she should be able to use it now, and he was going now, but she should keep it a secret. Then he walked away with Suzuko, making Mickey shocked and told him that he should at least tell her his name because Himogen is his nickname. He was surprised to hear it and peeked back. Mickey asked him if his alias and if the secret is for Suzuko's sake. Then she told him that he even accepted spiritual corruption for Suzuko, and asked him if he was even human or if he was a monster. He replied that he'd like to know the answer to it as well and asked Mickey what she thinks. Then Suzuko shoutingly told Mickey that her daddy was her daddy, making her confused. He continued to walk away with Suzuko while telling Mickey that his name was Leo, and next time they meet, she should go easy on him. Mickey agreed and replied that she got it. Meanwhile, outside, the system displayed the completion of the level F dungeon, the Black Forest, with a level C difficulty. The elapsed time was just 23 minutes, astounding the onlookers. Online, people shared videos of the Black Forest's disappearance, and in the conversation, someone mentioned that the top clearer ranking had been updated. Another person inquired about the ID, and the system revealed that the top player was named Keeper. Ten hours after the Black Forest was cleared, at a subway car garage, a horde of monsters emerged and one of them exclaimed that they had arrived too late. The leader, Two Head, addressed the group, noting that he suspected the dungeon had been cleared. But Whisper Flower's body was unusually clean-cut. He found it to be a gruesome act and wondered if they should inform her because her corpse was still warm. Bonerend, a member of their apparition association, advised Two Head to be silent and let him think. Bonerend observed that there was no core in a hole in Whisper Flower's chest, indicating that her killer was familiar with sprite-type monsters' vital points. The woman in the center informed the group that their apparition association had lost one of its members. Bonerend expressed his condolences, and Two Head reminded him not to speak ill of the deceased since she was one of them. Felmina from the Apparition Association wondered who could have committed the act and mentioned that Whisper Flower was the one closest to the god of monsters, their guide and leader. She then asked Chell if he could recreate images from before Whisper Flower's death. Chell assured her that he would do anything for her and activated a red light on his eye, unveiling a vision in the sky that displayed Leo asking Whisper Flower why she was letting go and teasingly urging her to hurry up because he wanted to see the god of monsters. Then they witnessed how Whisper Flower called Leo a monster and perished. 
Bone Wren couldn't believe that Whisper Flower was killed by a human child and angrily asked who dared to insult the Great One. He was about to swear, but then they heard Suzuko asking Leo who had harmed him. Felmina asked for an explanation, wondering why the first generation monster, the Queen of Destruction, referred to a man as Daddy. A monster inquired if the human was keeping the Queen, but Felmina dismissed the notion, suggesting that they were discussing the Queen of Destruction. She pondered whether the human was a higher being than she was. Felmina exclaimed that the Master of the Black Forest and the Queen of Destruction were virtually gods among the monsters, and the leader they had been seeking had emerged. As dungeon survivors, they needed a monster like him. Bone Rend and Two Head were taken aback by Felmina. Felmina's power. She was so frustrated that she lost her composure and declared that they must form a contact with that man, as he might be an incarnation of the Great One. She called upon Dahl, noting that she appeared the most human, and asked her to approach the man and discern his motives. Felmina entrusted Dahl with this task, to which Dahl respectfully replied that she would be honored, addressing Felmina as an ego, which means older sister. Meanwhile, in Getzerin City, at a job holder cooperative, players discussed the information about Keeper's 24-hour speed clear and marveled at this achievement. They wondered if Keeper could be a beta tester and if a beta tester could even clear a mutated dungeon. One of the men mentioned that even for a beta tester, it would be quite challenging and expressed the desire for more information. Mickey found Keeper's ID, who speed cleared the dungeon in 24 hours, rather unusual. Then a lady called Mickey, introducing herself as Jenna from the cooperative, and mentioned that she had something to discuss with Mickey related to the Black Forest, as Mickey had recently come out of it. Mickey informed Jenna that she had already reported everything about the Black Forest. However, Jenna clarified that her inquiry pertained to the player called Keeper, causing Mickey to squeeze a can of juice in frustration. Leo believed that information about whoever cleared a dungeon would attract significant attention and realized that he had predicted that things would turn out this way. A mysterious boy, accompanied by a monster, had entrusted his secret to her to conceal Suzuko's existence. Later, in an abandoned building, Leo decided to rest in the abandoned hotel for the time being. He wondered if there had been any change in his status, so he opened his status window and saw that he had reached level 5 in one go. However, his profession was still at level F, making him regard spiritual corruption as a nuisance. Then the system gave him a clear bonus called the Mimic Crystal at level C, which was unique. It explained that by using his strong willpower, he could change into attack, ranged, or defense forms. He gazed at the Mimic Crystal in amazement as it transformed. He'd never seen anything like it before, but he expected such uniqueness from an item like this. He decided to save the bonus for later because he had to deal with another issue first. He knew that the impure eye he obtained from the fight held Suzuko's memories. So, he called for Suzuko, and she emerged from hiding, asking him why. With a sweet tone, he informed her that he had a gift for her and asked her to come closer. He released his power through his hand and touched her. He placed his hand on her, telling her that she was now complete. Suddenly, she felt something on her body and shouted that she felt strange. He was amazed by her powerful presence but then realized that the father in Suzuko's memories wasn't him. This made him wonder if Suzuko no longer saw him as her father. He held the mimic crystal, which had transformed into a weapon, just in case. Suzuko lunged forward toward him, taking him by surprise. However, she hugged him and told him that she loved him, reassuring him that his worries were unfounded. He gently pushed her away and suggested she put him down. Once she did, he proposed they check how her status had changed, which filled her with joy. They noticed that her level had been raised, and the corrupted zombie had transformed into a level a monster. However, he suddenly felt intense pain in his arm, causing him to kneel on the ground. He wondered if it was due to using his strong willpower, but he remembered having it under control before. Eventually, the pain became unbearable, and he collapsed, leaving Suzuko worried. She called out to him, but he was in too much pain and ended up falling asleep. She lifted him up and realized he was injured. She laid him on the bed and apologized for not being able to protect him. Worried, she told him to get better soon. Then, she remembered to ask her daddy what he was doing. The man replied that he thought he'd create a utopia. She asked, what's a utopia? The man's figure slowly came to life, and she saw Leo telling her that it was a place where everyone could live happily, a place filled with hope. She shrank to a small figure, held Leo's hand, and hugged him, saying she remembered now. She sweetly said that her daddy is her daddy, and Suzuko is Suzuko. A moment later, he slowly regained consciousness and opened his eyes. He sat up, holding his head in pain, realizing that he was alive. Then, he remembered that the pain from the spiritual corruption had caused him to pass out the day before. Suddenly, he saw Suzuko with different expressions, asking if he was okay now. This shocked him, and he wondered what was happening. She moved closer to him, calling his name, and his vision adjusted, revealing that she was just one person. However, he felt that his hand was getting worse, and he began to see hallucinations. He knew that he had to get it under control to avoid problems. He focused on controlling the force of will, relieved that it had subsided for now. 
He remembered that he had used this method to refine his detection skill before, and surprisingly, he could use it to keep the force of will in check. Well guys, that's the end of the video. If you like this video comment part 2 in the comment section. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video. Thank you for watching and see you next time again.